Coming up today, emerging after a gruelling 15-hour questioning by prosecutors over bribery claims, former Prime Minister Iwangu says he defended his position and continues to deny the charges against him. In a widely expected move, Korea's central bank leaves its benchmark interest rate unchanged at a record low of 1.75% for a second straight month in May. Plus, Korea marks Teachers' Day, but the profession is losing its shine, with parents and students saying they respect teachers less these days. Stay tuned for these stories and more. Hello, it's noon on Friday the 15th of May. You're tuned in to our midday newscast here on Arirang TV. Thanks ever so much for joining us. I'm Mark Broom. We start with the latest developments on the ongoing bribery scandal here in Korea. Prosecutors grilled former Prime Minister Lee Wan Gu for 15 hours on Thursday over allegations he took more than 25,000 US dollars in illegal political funds from late businessman Song Wan Jong back in 2013 when he was running in a parliamentary by-election. Leaving the prosecutor's office in Seoul at roughly 1 a.m. on Friday, he told the awaiting horde of reporters that he maintained he did nothing wrong and fully defended his position of innocence. He also denied allegations that he attempted to persuade one of the witnesses to change his testimony. That witness had told prosecutors that E and Song were together in 2013 during E's run for a seat in the National Assembly. Prosecutors reportedly planned to indict the former Prime Minister and Gyeongsang Namdo Province Governor Hong Jun Pyo on charges of breaking the political funding law as early as next week. Korea's National Assembly remains in deadlock over a controversial bill aimed at reforming the country's budget-draining pension system for civil servants. With just three economy-related bills passed this week, the ruling Senuri Party suggested holding a three-way meeting on Sunday with the main opposition New Politics Alliance for Democracy and President Park Geun-hye at the presidential office of Chung Wa Dae. The ruling party says the meeting could help the two parties reach a compromise over the pension bill and get the National Assembly working again. The presidential office, however, has asked that the meeting be pushed back while they decide on whether to invite Deputy Prime Minister and Finance Minister Che Kyung Hwan to that meeting as well. Now, as expected, the Bank of Korea has decided to maintain its benchmark interest rate for May at a record low of 1.75%. But market watchers say a rate cut could be in the cards next month. Shin Se-min has more. Following its monthly monetary policy meeting on Friday, the central bank announced that it will be keeping its key rate of 1.75% for the second month in a row. The freeze is meant to assess the effect of the previous rate cut in March, a quarter percentage point drop, the third cutback since August of last year. BOK Governor Lee ji maintained the rate even as other major economies followed the global trend towards monetary easing. China and Australia recently reduced borrowing rates to prop up growth. Still, market expectations are building for another cut in June, as many believe that the current rate is not enough to propel the slow-growing economy. It looks as though policymakers will evaluate economic data from the second quarter before making another reduction. The lowered interest rate has already had an effect as Koreans took out nearly 530 billion U.S. dollars in household loans in April, a record for unmonth growth. However, the nation's exports also declined for the fourth straight month in April, plunging the most on month in more than two years. Slow outbound shipments are a growth risk, especially as sales abroad make up roughly half the Korean economy. Shin Se-min, Arirang News. 
Korean tech giant Samsung Electronics has retained a spot in the world's top 10 largest ICT firms in terms of market capitalization. But the firm has seen its rank slip for the third straight year, mostly due to slowing smartphone sales. Financial information provider S&P Capital IQ says Samsung's market cap was just shy of 190 billion US dollars as of May 1st. That lands it in 10th, down one notch from last year. Number one, by a huge margin, was Apple. Its market cap stood at $743 billion, which is nearly the combined market cap of Microsoft and Google, which ranked second and third on the list. Apple has been top of the perch since 2012. Samsung, on the other hand, has tumbled from sixth to tenth in the space of just three years. While no Japanese companies made the list, three Chinese firms, China Mobile, Alibaba and Tencent, were in the top ten. Korea recently celebrated Children's Day and Parents' Day, and today it's time to appreciate the important role teachers play in young lives. Traditionally, educators were very highly respected in Korean society, but there's growing evidence they're losing their revered status. Connie Kim reports. This chalkboard message reads, thank you, teacher. The students in this class are following the tradition of pinning a carnation on their teacher's shirt and writing letters of appreciation. I love the first impression of my teacher. She would kindly answer to all my questions even when she was busy. In the past, many students thought of their teachers as second parents who offered life lessons and advice as well as academic knowledge. Korea has been celebrating this special day for more than 50 years. But as time goes by, respect for teachers seems to be falling. In a recent survey, 83 percent of respondents said they believe that teachers are not well respected. In the past, it was common for adults to stay in touch with teachers, especially on Teacher's Day. But 78 percent say they haven't phoned or visited any of their former educators in the past year. Experts say this data reflects an educational shift from a teacher-centered classroom to an overwhelming focus on competition and getting good grades. In the past, there were more than instructors. They taught life lessons to students. But with academic competition getting fiercer, teachers are viewed as people who just exist to give information. Yang says schools are a microcosm of society, and teachers should play a major role in giving students direction in life. To do that, educators need an environment where expertise is acknowledged and respected. Connie Kim, Arirang News. President Park Geun-hye has marked Teachers' Day by highlighting the role of educators in helping future generations become the pillars of society. The president also referred to North Korea's recent provocations and reports of instability inside the regime and said fostering the values of democracy and a love of one's country have a direct effect on a nation's destiny. She asked the country's teachers to help young people develop these convictions. President Park also encouraged teachers to help students realize their potential through creativity. It was the first time a Korean president attended a Teachers' Day event. President Park also took the opportunity to thank her own middle and high school teachers. Parliamentary lawmakers from Korea and the United States have been holding talks in Washington on strengthening the alliance between the two countries through congressional diplomacy. A delegation from Korea's National Assembly, led by lawmaker Lee Byung-sok, met with the new co-chairman of the U.S.-Korea Interparliamentary Exchange on Thursday local time. He asked that the U.S. Congress play an active role in urging Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe to apologize for Japan's wartime history so the three countries together can move forward and pursue peace and prosperity in Asia and beyond. The lawmakers also launched a council that will serve as a diplomatic channel between the two parliaments. Japan's cabinet has approved a set of controversial defence bills that will allow its military under specific circumstances to go beyond its self-defence stance and fight overseas if a close ally comes under attack. Kim Hyun-bin reports. Defending the move to break away from his country's decades-old pacifist constitution, 
Prime Minister Shinzo Abe said Japan's new defense policy would deter threats and secure world peace. If the new set of bills pass parliament, as widely expected, Japan will be able to come to the aid of the United States if it comes under attack. Speaking at a news conference on Thursday, Abe tried to play down the possibility of Japan being forced to join an unpopular war. Many people worry we might get sucked into a war with the U.S., but that will never happen. Abe stressed that forging a permanent law would allow the government to dispatch its self-defense forces without delay. The so-called collective self-defense doctrine has come under intense scrutiny in Korea and China, themselves victims of Japan's past aggressions. Ahead of the cabinet's approval, both countries warned Tokyo to exercise restraint and be transparent about its plans. The Korean government has stressed that it will never accept any measures that affect Korea's national interests. And it will certainly reject any attempt to deploy Japanese troops to the Korean peninsula without Seoul's prior consent. The set of bills have already been submitted to Japan's parliament. They are expected to be processed in mid-June. Kim Hyun-bin, Arirai News. North Korea fired artillery shells into the West Sea near the de facto maritime border known as the Northern Limit Line for a second straight night on Thursday. The South Korean military says the North began the drill at 7.10 p.m. Korea time, firing some 190 shells, although none of them landed on the south side of the uh, heavily patrolled waters. The drill lasted for about two hours and no clashes were reported. North Korea notified the south of the drill on Wednesday before firing off around 130 shells uh, on Wednesday night. Pyongyang says the drill period will continue through midnight on this Friday. North Korea's gruesome public execution of Defense Minister Hyun Young Chul, one of its highest level officials, is once again drawing the world's attention to the regime's rampant human rights violations. For an expert's insight on this issue, our Hang Sang Yi sat down with the executive director of the Committee for Human Rights in North Korea. North Korea is executing its senior officers in the most gruesome way, according to Greg Scarlatu, executive director of the Committee for Human Rights in North Korea. You're talking about an execution by ZPU-4 anti-aircraft machine gun. If you're talking about a person being hit by automatic fire, by 50 caliber rounds, you're literally talking about bodies being pulverized, obliterated, turned into pink mist. Last month, Scarlett II released the first ever satellite images of a public execution of roughly 10 senior North Korean officers at Kangun shooting range. He calls the killings a clear human rights violation, but adds the high-level executions could help bring about a change in the regime. And remember, this is after all, a Confucian or post-Confucian culture, having something left, having a body, is very important. But they simply obliterated every trace, any trace that this person ever existed is eliminated. Now, certainly, these executions have had a lot of coverage. So I believe that this will indeed result in enhanced awareness internationally. What's behind the brutality, says Scarlett Chu, is the young North Korean leader's insecurity. Noting Pyongyang's ties with Beijing have suffered after the execution of Chang Sung Tek, who was the North's point man on China, he says the recent execution of Defense Chief Hyun Young Chul may hurt relations with Russia. Hyun was the point man on Moscow and even met with the Russian president last year. If those factors cause the situation to deteriorate, Scarlett II foresees more gruesome killings that could eventually shake up the entire regime. For this reason, the regime continues to be unstable, and unfortunately for as long as the regime continues to be unstable, the supreme leader, who also happens to be quite insecure, will be very tempted to continue with, uh, with this gruesome practice and with these executions. And could these constant purges and executions in turn destabilize the Kim Jong-un regime? We are coming to the realization that the highest ranking officials of North Korea are also victims of human rights violations. I wonder 
wouldn't those same elites of North Korea start wondering about their own survival if even the most loyal of loyalists who have served the Kim family for decades are not safe? Then who is? Hwang Sang-hee, Arirang News. Now, North Korea has unveiled a new tablet PC at this year's Pyongyang International Trade Fair. The country's state-run Korea Central News Agency says the new gadget, called uh, Myohyang, was developed and manufactured in North Korea. The device reportedly has an 8 and 16 gigabyte version and the battery is said to last up to six hours. An employee at the trade fair said the easy-to-use device allows users to watch TV. Now, you might be able to hear the sound of millions of hearts breaking as Baeyong Joon, the Korean actor who is credited by many for sparking the Korean wave in the early 2000s, is getting married. His bride-to-be is singer-turned-actress Park Soo-jin. The hottest celebrity buzz here in Korea at the moment. The news has also made headlines in Japan. Reports from various sources, including Tokyo-based news agency Kyodo News, attracted numerous congratulatory messages from Japanese fans. Key East Entertainment, which represents both actors, posted the announcement on its website on Thursday. Bay, who became a huge international star for his leading role in Winter Sonata in 2002, is a majority shareholder of the agency with shares worth more than 125 million US dollars. And that's where we leave it for now on this Friday afternoon here in Seoul. I'm Mark Broom. Have a wonderful weekend and we do hope to see you at the same time on Monday. Goodbye.